I do what I do because I'm all about freedom. And many of us are not free. We are trapped in these bodies, in these experiences, in the past, in the fear of the future. I had a request someone asked me to talk about shame. And what, what is shame? Shame is when there's a belief that something is wrong with me as a person. I, I me, am wrong, nasty, um, yeah, like I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, don't know how to, I don't know how else to explain it, but like, yes, me, I'm wrong. So is that true? Is it possible there are people out there that who they are is absolutely wrong? I don't think that's true at all. And it goes back to, I believe that all of us, um, we can truly find the, the ability to be free to be who we were created to be. But again, a lot of us live with shame. So I was requested to talk about shame and touch and how many of us have experienced trauma at some point in our life and we feel unworthy of touch, which means unworthy of care, unworthy of attention, unworthy of nurture. Now the antidote to shame is to talk about it, is to come out of the darkness. Shame loves dark, murky, scary places and it wants to stay there. But once you can start talking about it and start sharing with people around you that you love or who love you and tell them how you feel, that's when shame starts to fall apart. But what's required to talk about it is vulnerability. And that's where it's really scary because are you willing to tell people that love you or that you love that you're scared, that you feel like something is wrong with you that's the hardest part. So I had a client who hired me for many hours and they were struggling around the feelings of being unworthy to be touched and unworthy to have someone spend time with them and take care of them. And often in our sessions, um, they would pull away from me. Like they would be there and be like, okay, I'm safe, I'm good. And then this like rush of like, oh no, gosh, I have to get away. Like, And they would break off from me because those feelings came up of like, this is, you know, I, I don't deserve this, I'm not worthy of this. And it was super difficult for them to, like, to get, come back into relaxing and with me. And, and bit by bit, after many hours, they were able to find that. It was beautiful. And part of that process was them replacing those lies that they had believed when they were children and that was reaffirmed throughout their entire life was like, you're not worthy of attention, you're not worthy to be taken care of, you're not worthy to be nurtured. And seeing those lies for what they were, because they are, they are lies, and replacing them with truths and with a lived experience where there was another person in that room who does and did care and gave all my attention and my nurture. And sometimes it's a matter of changing beliefs. Um, the brain has this thing called neuroplasticity and when we can begin to take those trauma traumatic experiences of shame and unworthiness and replace them with other experiences that contradict those that's it that's the key um, having different experiences around it so having relationships where your worthiness is affirmed and that care is given again but here's where it's a vicious cycle Sometimes you need to ask for it. Again, it goes back to vulnerability. And if I were to able to like map this out, like vulnerability is at the center of the whole thing and all the other things that are desired and wanted, like require vulnerability. Um, and so maybe you're not ready to ask people. And that's why pets are amazing. <laughs> pets are unconditional and giving. And maybe you begin there. And maybe you say, I can't afford a pet, and I can't do that, or I can't go anywhere where there are animals because of many reasons. Then I would, my last um, suggestion would be, find objects in your home that you, that bring joy to you, that feel nourishing to you. Um, and make that object, have it, make it have meaning. For example, put on that object, you know, that I am worthy of love. And every time you touch it or see it, have that remind you have these messages that throughout your house on objects and maybe when you grab your favorite co coffee cup or when you um, I don't know put on a special t-shirt maybe you have it in a tag that you you're clothing yourself or you're using objects that continually remind you and your brain about the truth about who you are that you are so valuable 
and worthy and lovable and needed. So that's it. Mm. Ask for the touch you need and if you can't ask, start breaking it down and taking those steps. Again, so that you can be free. Be free to be who you were created to be.